I am Anthony from Hatchley's Net. In this video, I will be covering an individual topic from my book, The 21st Century Workplace, a HR and EEO guide. If you like what you hear, please check out the Amazon affiliate link in the description or visit my website at tony.hasledge.net. That's T-O-N-Y dot H-A-S-L-A-G-E dot net. Thank you. I am Anthony for Hashtagnet, and today we're going to discuss two topics. One is a dress code, and the other is how to dress for success. Most of us have probably seen or read a news story about a businesswoman who was fired from her job for dressing too provocatively. The problem was not the way she dressed, as the woman was wearing a knee-high skirt, dress shirt, and blouse. None of her clothing revealed any more skin than her lower legs, arms, and neck. Frankly, her dress was considered... By most outsiders, a rather conservative one for the workplace. The problem is that the business fired her for being too attractive because the males in the workplace could not focus on their work. I'm going to put air quotes on that because they could... Anyway, uh, we cannot punish people for being too attractive or unattractive. Uh, the people who should have been fired were the men who could not keep their minds on their work. There was another news story about a woman who was boarding a flight and was asked to leave because she did not meet the airline's dress code. The woman was also very attractive, but in this case, uh, the clothes that she wore were not appropriate for a family setting such as a commercial airline. What she wore was a very loose muscle t-shirt and a short skirt. When asked by the local media as to why she was dressed as she were, uh, she responded that she had planned to walk off of the airplane and head straight to the beach. Later, it was disclosed that the airline did ask the woman to put on less revealing clothing so that she could board the airplane, but her response was that all of her clothing was beach wear. In a professional setting, it is a good idea to set a minimum of dress. Our society is heavily influenced by sexuality. The problem is that it can distract in the workplace. Since we cannot fire people for their level of attractiveness, and we do not wish to fire people for being unnecessarily distracted we have to set some ground rules asking anyone to obey any level of a dress code in a professional setting can be a sensitive issue it is uncomfortable for some people to explain in non-sexualized terms why wearing a specific article of clothing is inappropriate it all boils down to mutual respect it is a lot easier to have respect for someone when you're not thinking about what you would do with them if you had three minutes with them in the broom closet Sure, no amount of clothing will stop everyone from thinking deviant thoughts, but obeying the dress code is a simple enough deterrent. The most important thing that everyone needs to know is to wear underwear. Clothing malfunctions happen and indecent exposure can get someone fired. It is in their best interest to wear underwear in case outer clothing is damaged. This is also a good reason to wear slightly loose clothing as you may never know how you may have to stretch yourself during the workday. The typical thing to stress to women is that they should not wear tops that reveal cleavage and dresses or skirts that allow people the ability to see underwear when bending over. For men it is best to stress that pants or slacks should be loose fitting in the area below the waist. We want to encourage leaving everything to the imagination, not actually seeing it or its outline. As managers, we must also set the dress code to fit our work environment. If we are a gardening business, we know that employees will be working outside most of the time in the summer and that they should be permitted to wear lightweight clothing. This usually means a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. We should not be asking our employees to wear dress shirts and slacks to work in the sun just because we want to keep a professional look. Such a notion is cruel in the summer heat. In cooler times of the year, such a request would be more appropriate. Next, we're going to talk about how to dress for success. Tradition plays a significant role in how professionals dress in the modern workplace. For example, the necktie was originally created approximately 400 years ago as a stylish scarf for men out in the cold. During the last century, a significant number of professional men wore hats and wristwatches religiously. Today, relatively few professionals wear hats unless they work outside, and even less wear wristwatches, but they still wear neckties. The essential purpose of a tradition is to create a sense of comfort and uniformity. 
Not everyone can appreciate change and even less like change simply for the sake of change. While neckties, hats, and wristwatches serve few functional purposes in today's workplace, they have become strictly status symbols. Some research has indicated that wearing a tie even when applying to a position where a tie would be unrequired dress is a sign of professionalism. Wearing an expensive watch is an indicator of wealth and a nice fedora hat is a sign of having class. Combining all three items in a formal setting provides an appearance of being a true gentleman. Women have historically had a harder time blending into the professional workplace. Prior to the 1980s, it was expected that all women wore either dresses or skirts in the workplace. When the corporate glass ceiling was finally broken, it was not unusual for women to dress similarly to men. In our society today, women that can wear a pantsuit and directly compete with men are highly respected. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. We would also like to thank our contributors and patrons for supporting this video. If you wish to add to the discussion, post a comment below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledgenet and our website at hasledge.net.